Hey everybody, Dennis back with a brand new video for you today. I'm gonna show you how to change oil on a 2018 Ford F-150 with the three and a half liter V6 EcoBoost motor. Let's do this. All right, today we're gonna show you how to change the oil on a 2018 Ford F-150. It's pretty much the same for all the models. This is a three and a half liter V6 EcoBoost, so our first step is to open our hood. All right, so our first step, we wanna pop the hood here, so right in the driver's side footwell, just pull that lever there. Now, to get the hood open, you release, it's kinda of hard to see, but if you look and you see where the metal latch piece is coming down, right to the right of it, there's a lever. You lift it up, and your hood pops. So this guy right here is what you're looking for, so you can kinda of reach your hand in here flat and tilt it to the side, and that'll pop your hood. All right, so, Change the oil here. This is our oil fill cap right here. So we want to pop that out. I typically will just drop it here by the air intake. Kind of keeps it safe. This is your dipstick. Uh, we can leave that in for now. For the 2018, I'm not sure if the 17 uses it or not, but um, it's a 5W30. I recommend full synthetic because of the turbos. Um, I had a 2015. F-150 EcoBoost 3.5, just like this one, and it was 520. So, unfortunately, I couldn't use the oil that I already had. I had a six-pack uh, case of the 520, and I could not use it on this truck, so I had to go out and buy the 530. So, typically, I do like to use the Ford Motorcraft filters, um, but they didn't have them at the store, so I ended up picking up this Fram. So, for the 2018 EcoBoost, it is a TG. 10575, so 10575 is the number you're worried about. TG is just the tough guard. Uh, PH, I believe it's PH for their lower end one. Um, and they also have this one here. Uh, this is ultra synthetic, so this is their XG series. This one's the most expensive one. It's like, like 10 or 11 bucks. I think this one was nine. Um, but I do recommend, um, you know, if you don't want to use the Fram and you want to use the Ford Motorcraft ones, uh, you can pick them up on Amazon fairly cheap. You can get them in multi-packs too and save even more money. So this is the oil we're going to be using today. This is a 5W30. This is just a regular Mobile One synthetic. Uh, I didn't get the high mileage because the truck only has about 30,000 miles on it. So still fairly new. So we're going to use this today. One other thing I do recommend getting is oil drain plugs. They recommend, I believe, to change them at every oil change. You probably don't have to. Um, I noticed the last time I changed the oil on this truck that it was weeping out a little bit. So I bought this multi-pack um, of Dorman. I, I forget exactly how much it was. It was maybe 15 or 16 bucks, but I got these on Amazon. So we're gonna put a fresh one of these in uh, after we drain the oil. All right, so some of the things we're gonna need, we're gonna need an oil drain pan and a funnel. Also make sure on your drain pan, that your vent is open. That's key because if you start filling this up and your vent is closed, as the oil drains inside of there, it's actually gonna bubble up and it's gonna splatter. And if you have a nice garage floor or a nice driveway, you don't wanna get any oil on it. So, little tip also, you're gonna need uh, some metric sockets, a ratchet, an eight mil socket to take off the pan underneath the truck. I like to also put a little anti-seize on those screws for uh, that pan on the bottom. Um, if you don't have either a drill driver or a little impact like this to use, you can just use uh, like a quarter inch ratchet. And then I like to use gloves just to keep everything clean and then some paper towels to wipe everything up. All right, so this is the pan I was talking about. We have to drop, there's four screws on here. They're eight mil. So you have two on the back side on either side. And then there's two kind of tucked up in the front here. You got to kind of really shimmy under here, but um, I never really have to put the truck up on jacks to do an oil change on it. So this come out fairly easy. There is sometimes a little, either an E-clip or a washer on the top here, and it does rot and go missing just from like road salt, especially if you live in a, you know, an area that gets a lot of snow during the winter. Uh, we're up in the northeast here, so that salt kind of corrodes that stuff. Um, could probably put a new e-clip on here or whatever, but for the time being, I'm just going to leave it off. So typically what I do is I'll 
get the back and the front on one side and then go to the opposite side and get that. Alright, so that's that side. Alright, now we're going to take off the opposite side. So here's that washer I was talking about. This side does have it. You can kind of see it right there. So it's no big deal if it does go missing. It's just going to be a little bit harder to put this back up after we're done here. Right, and there's the pan. And you just kind of move it towards the back of the truck and then you're good. And now I'll show you where the oil drain plug is. All right, and you can see the drain plug I was talking about here. So the ones, the replacement ones that we have are orange, this one's yellow, and you can see this one, I don't know if it's the original to the truck or whatnot, but you can kind of see that everything is wet down here. And I've been noticing a little oil drip on the ground in the driveway. And it's definitely because this oil drain plug is leaking. So hopefully we put this new Dorman, uh, the orange Dorman one in here, and that'll fix that problem. So you'll notice on here, there's a little tab in the center. This doesn't have that half inch ratchet. Um, inset on it so we can just grab that with a pair of pliers you can see the clips on either side here and that'll just pop off and we should be good to go all right so we have our drain pan under here and i'm just going to grab onto this guy with a pair of pliers give it a little turn See it just popped a little bit there? That's all you need to do. And then we just make sure our drain pan is right underneath it. And you turn it. it. It won't fall straight out. You actually have to kind of turn it a little bit more. All right, and we'll get our drain pan into a good position here. And we will pop this out. And you'll notice that it's starting to drain a little bit so you can actually just pull this out slowly it's not like one of the screw in type you can actually you know and just make sure that your oil pan drain pan is centered on here really good all right and i'm gonna move this over a little bit and then we'll just ink that, and we should be good to go. And I do recommend doing this while the engine's a little warm, not like really hot. It will help you drain this a lot faster. And we're just gonna let this guy drain here and we'll come back to it here when we go to put a new plug in. All right, so we're all drained. I'm gonna take a paper towel now and wipe the area down a little bit. And in the inside, just because this thing was kind of weeping before, I wanna make sure there's no like dirt or sand or anything in here. So we look good. Now I'm gonna take the new one. I'm gonna take just a little bit of the old oil here and I'm gonna rub it on the seal. You'll notice this has that half inch. Actually, I keep saying half inch. It's actually three eighths inset. So just put it in, we'll turn it, and then it clicks in place and that's it. Super simple. And then when we go to change the oil next time now we have this 3 8 inset on here all we need is a ratchet we don't need a socket anymore so it's pretty awesome it's kind of a nice new feature I'm sure people complain about it now that it's not a, a metal bolt with a magnet on the end but 
Um, all I'm gonna do now is I am going to kind of wipe up all the oil that's dripped down here and we'll clean it up and then we'll go take the oil filter off. We can actually put uh, the this uh, shield on back on the bottom of the truck. Um, you can leave it off if you want, like so after you start the truck just to make sure nothing's leaking. Uh, I may just wait to do that, so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then we'll go to the filter. All right, so here's the old drain plug. As you can see, this O-ring is definitely beat. It's kind of misshapen a little bit. It's not really rounded on the, on the front side here. It's kind of flat, so I'm pretty sure that this is why we had a leak. So as you can see, kind of see from up top here, the oil filter is right down there where my finger is. So when you do pull this off, the oil will drain. There's a plastic pan underneath it that actually will guide the oil towards the back of uh, back side of the end. Actually, it's really the front side of the engine, but the back side of where the oil filter is. So I'm gonna show you where to put the drip pan so you don't make a mess. So one tool I forgot to mention is your oil filter wrench. So there's a couple different styles that you can buy. You can use, you know, they make them in plastic or metal. You can put a ratchet on these. I like using these pliers. You actually get a little better leverage with them and they're adjustable. They're slotted here so you can go depending on your oil filter size, the larger or smaller setting. So this is a metal shield right here. On the back side of here, you can see how it's kind of stained. This is where the oil drips out. There's a plastic pan above this and it guides the oil down. So this is exactly where you want to have your oil drain pan so you don't make a mess. And then, kind of hard to see with the lighting here. But there is your oil filter. So I like using these oil filter pliers or this wrench so I can just get that right up in there and loosen that up. So depending on who changed the oil filter before, you know, if it's on there, cranked on there good, you may have a hard time getting this off. Uh, but I changed this last. It's not extremely tight, you know, it's just tight enough, so it should come right off. All right, so I already loosened the oil filter here. Try to not get a shadow here if I can help it. So here we go. So I loosened it with a wrench already. So I'm not gonna undo it all the way. I'm gonna spin it probably about four or five times here. And you'll notice, just like I mentioned earlier, it's gonna drip out of the back side here of this shield. So you can kind of see it dripping out here. That's where it's gonna come out. So it's uh, important that you have your pan right there, otherwise you're gonna make a mess. So we'll let this drain off a little bit and then we'll yank the filter. We'll wipe the filter mating surface or mounting surface on the engine. And we'll take the new filter, put a little oil on it, on the seal, and tighten her up, and we're ready to fill up. So one more thing too, like when you go to take this oil filter out, try to tilt the back side of it down, instead of just pouring all of the oil that's in it. I try to tilt it up a little bit like this, give it a second, and then I'll pull it out just so we don't make too much of a mess. And you'll notice that there's a little bit kind of leaking down my hand here, and then I'll just put it in the drain pan like this, and just drop it in here, and let it drain the rest of the way. And then I'll leave my drain pan under here for probably a good three minutes, and that'll just let any of the oil that's in that plastic catch pan underneath where the filter assembly is, it'll let all of that oil drain out. So you can see where the threaded post is there where the oil filter mounts on. So we're gonna wipe all that down with a clean paper towel. We wanna make sure we don't have any dirt or debris or anything on there and we'll put our new filter on there. All right, so while we're letting that finish drain, we're gonna take our new oil filter here and a rubber seal on it. Tr comes dry, obviously, there's no oil on it. So what I like to do is I just crack open one of the new quartz. I dip my finger in it like this a little bit, not too much. And then I coat that rubber gasket and inside of the threads here. And now that's ready to go in. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean where the oil filter assembly is and we'll screw this new filter on and now we're ready to fill up with oil. All right, so we're just gonna take a paper towel and we're gonna wipe down the meeting surface there. 
so clean. And we're gonna take our new filter and thread it on. And you don't wanna cross thread this. I'm not sure if you can actually. I've never had an issue mounting an oil filter back on, but I kinda get it snug. And then I don't use the wrench to tighten this. I get it snug. And then I turn it by hand about a half turn. And that's typically good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come down to the bottom side here. Gonna wipe off any excess oil. You can kind of reach around the back side where that drip tray is for the oil filter. And then we're gonna put our uh, oil in the engine. All right, so we got our funnel and our oil fill hole here. And we're just gonna drop in the six quarts. Uh, 530 that this engine needs. I'm gonna go slow with this. You know what? Just pour this whole entire thing in here because it will splatter. But it does go pretty quick. And then definitely save your old containers for your waste oil so you can bring them and have it recycled. So we're gonna check our oil level now. So you don't wanna check the first time you pull it out here. You wanna wipe it off. Good, so there's two holes on here. You want to be in between those two holes. This definitely does take the full six quarts. It's looking at my wife's car, which takes five and a half. So I always have an extra half quart after using one of these six packs. Then have a rag and you can pull this out of here, you don't drip everywhere. I like to wipe off the fill cap before I put it in. And that's it. I'll show you how to reset the oil life gauge in the truck too. It's a little tricky on the 2018s. All right, we're running right now, and we don't have anything dripping out of the new oil drain plug. So, we're good. Good to go here. We're going to set the truck off, and we're going to install the guard on the bottom again. All right. So, we're all done, and we're going to put our shield back in here. So, there is two little tabs on the front there, if you can see. They kind of... Actually, there's one tab on this. 2015 had two tabs, so um, all I do is I set that tab in there and then I'll take one of the back screws and just thread it in with my finger. And what that'll do is that'll kind of hold it in place in the meantime here. And then I can grab my impact driver. Just run that in a little bit. And then move to the end here. Obviously you don't want to you don't want to crank it, break it, but you do want to tighten it. Because you don't want it falling off while you drive it. And her shield's back in, we are done.